Hey guys, welcome to episode number 394. Today is Monday, so it's update Monday. And today I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the axolotl eggs and the baby tadpoles, hatchlings, whatever you want to call them, fry. Um, this is the setup that I've got going on. I needed to cool the water temperature a few degrees down here, so what I did was I set up a box fan. I've got that running on low during the day and night to uh, blow some cool air across the top of these containers, which uh, effectively allows me to drop the temperature uh, in these vats by around 5 degrees or so. Um, over here, you'll see we have a few eggs left. There's some right there. I don't know if it's going to be able to focus on those. Um, mostly the, uh, the, the wild type, the brown type eggs left. Um, the albinos were actually laid a few days uh, prior to these guys. So most of those, or if not all of them, have already hatched out. So I've been letting these guys hatch in here. And you'll see there's one right here that is, uh, he's hatched out of his egg within the last day. So I'm going to take a turkey baster and suck him up and uh, deposit him into this vat, which has all of our little baby axolotls. Again, most of them here are the albinos. Some of them are the wild type. Um, the albinos have been in here for three or four days now, and uh, they're pretty active. They're swimming around a little bit, which is interesting to see. Again, sorry for the focus, lack of focus. Um, I've intentionally left this room with not a whole lot of light because they don't do well under hot, uh, heavy light. So uh, the combination of them being super small and not being a whole lot of light down here makes this difficult to film. But uh, these guys are doing really well. Um, the one thing that's really um, unnerving and and probably the most difficult part about this project, this hatching project, is the transition between them coming out of the egg, transferring them over here where they have a yolk sac and they continue to just sort of sit around for a day or two eating off that yolk sac. Now I am feeding brine shrimp, live brine shrimp. I've got my brine shrimp net right here. I've got my brine shrimp hatchery going full speed ahead and I feed these guys two or three times a day. I do basically a 100% water change on this um, once a day and uh, that's just to keep the water as clean as, as humanly possible and uh, allow them to feed as much as possible. And the one thing that I'm concerned about is their lack of feeding. Uh, at least I don't see it happening and maybe it's happening but just because they're so small maybe I don't see it. Uh, I don't see them feeding. So uh, they are still alive. I haven't lost any of them and they do appear to be growing so maybe they are eating the uh, the brine shrimp and I just don't notice it um, but yeah it's 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 a little challenging it's a little unnerving I don't know if they're all about to starve to death or if they're all happy and healthy um, I have read that it it, it 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 can be a little challenging to get them to eat um, you do need to feed them live food really the only two options you have are live brine shrimp or live daphnia to get these guys started and yeah they won't eat for the first few days but once you start feeding and they start eating and then they start growing rapidly then you can get them onto uh, frozen foods and everything else but uh, they need to sort of see that uh, live food moving around um, that's sort of what triggers them to eat initially and so that's what you need to provide them uh, multiple times a day to uh, to get them to grow so uh, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and hoping because I'm feeding them brine shrimp they're eating it um, there is a little bit of a wind current coming from this fan when it's on and it is sort of circulating the water around in this little tub which is a good thing I think because it keeps those brine shrimp moving around um, otherwise they would be attracted to the light so a lot of them would just end up on this side uh, so they do end up floating around quite a bit 
which is good. Uh, I have tried to keep this water level as low as possible. It's about an inch deep to keep those brine shrimp towards the bottom where they actually can get eaten, um, which is another good thing. And I'm just hoping that they're eating. And I'm just going to continue to feed them and continue to monitor them. And hopefully I can see that snapping uh, feeding behavior where they just dart forward and uh, and eat something that's in front of them. Again, brine shrimp are very small. These guys are very small. And again, they're very hard to film, so apologies for the, uh, the lack of focus there. But I'm just gonna keep feeding these guys. Hopefully they will eat, and uh, hopefully we can get them to grow a little bit, uh, move them into a larger uh, setup, maybe the 30 gallon uh, breeder, and uh, you guys can see their growth and evolution from there. But until then, we've got a wastewater container here, we've got the eggs over here, we've got the babies right here, and we've got a spare one uh, over here. As they start to grow, I'll probably start splitting them out um, so that, you know, I started with around 100, so if I can get like 20 to 25 um, per container, I think that'll help spread them out help reduce uh, cannibalism when they start to grow a little bit larger and hopefully they just continue to grow so that's the update for today again I haven't really seen the feeding activity from these guys yet uh, I'm about to feed them some brine shrimp and hopefully they uh, they start to show signs of attacking that food they are mobile now uh, they are moving around quite a bit jumping around swimming around so uh, hopefully that's a sign that they are ready to eat and ready to start growing. So anyways guys, that's the little project going on down here. Again, sorry for the lack of focus, um, but as these guys start to get a little bit bigger, they'll be a little bit easier to film. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Have a happy Halloween, and I'll see you guys later.